This is a signature ZTT budget build because we got the red and black aesthetic, some serious performance, and the entire thing cost me less than $500. I'm gonna walk you through every part inside of here and the reasons I chose every part, then I'll take it home with me to daily drive it for a few days and give you my thoughts, and afterwards we'll benchmark it a bit more to see what it's fully capable of. Just as a heads up, you're about to watch Sam actually building the PC and not me. I got big time sick during this project, so I had to let the professionals step in and get this assembled for me. This is also why I'm not on camera at all during this video, but it all should be perfectly fine. Starting with the CPU, we're gonna go with a brand new Ryzen 5 5500. If you're willing to shop on AliExpress like I am, then this will cost you about 65 bucks, but if you're not, then no big deal because you'll just have to pay like $20 more from Amazon. Here's some of the main reasons why I like it. Cooling the 5500 is the Vitro V5 Black. Haven't gone with this one in quite a while, but it's always been a staple all black ARGB cooler for less than 30 bucks. The motherboard we're using for the 5500 is an MSI B550 Gaming Gen 3. You definitely don't need a B550 just for a 5500, but I sniped this used on Amazon resale and for $77, that aesthetic was way too good to pass up. It's also just a really great price for any ATX sized AM4 motherboard. For the RAM, this is the Patriot Viper Elite 2, which is a 16 gigabyte kit clocked at 3200 megahertz. There's a ton of options at this low $30 price range with those exact same specs. So you might as well go with whatever aesthetic your build is gonna be rocking. And remember that links to everything in including the RAM kit I'm talking about today are down in the description, but what's also down there is a link to the sponsor of today's video, GVG Mall. I know you've heard me say this a bunch of times already, but the reason GVG Mall keeps sponsoring these videos is because a bunch of you guys and I keep buying their keys. It's plain and simple. They have the best prices on Microsoft Office keys, other software, games, and even some console stuff as well. More importantly though, is that they have the gold mine for cheap Windows activation keys and the process couldn't be any easier. Now, these prices on their website look great already, but the true magic is when you use code ZTT18 because that'll give you a beefy 25% discount. They'll then instantly send you the key, you paste that into your Windows activation setting, and then boom, you get full access to Windows, you remove that nasty watermark, and you'll get every update that's available. I wouldn't be showing this to you if it didn't work, so head on down in the description and use code ZTT18 if you need to pick up a key for way cheaper than the normal price. Continuing on this parts list, next up is the power supply, and this is the MSI Mag A650BM. I actually just bought 20 of these on Amazon Prime Day for 50 bucks. Again, another reason why you should be in the ZTT Discord server for the really good deals. And normally they sit around 60 to 70 bucks, so keep that in mind. After that, we have the SSD, and here's where the only asterisk of today's build comes into play. The physical drive I'm using is the Team Grip MP33 512 gigabyte NVMe, and that's only because I got it for free in a Newegg combo deal. I still can't believe Newegg was giving these out for free with a GPU purchase, but obviously most of you probably won't have that deal, so I'd recommend just going with any Gen 3 or Gen 4 one terabyte drive that you can find the best deal on. Models like the MP33, Silicon Power A60, and the Clevcraft C710 all sit around that low $50 mark, and with that pricing, this does bump up the cost of the build to just over $500. For me though, since I didn't have to pay for it, I'm still coming in under 500 bucks. Just wanted to clarify that and be transparent. Moving on to the case, this is the Montec XR, and I'm not gonna lie, it's hard to beat the value of this one right now for any build. This is an ATX sized fish tank and super clean case, and it also comes pre-installed with three ARGB fans. For an ATX size case, it honestly doesn't get any better than this right now in terms of value, and it's actually kinda better than what the price suggests because it doesn't feel like a cheap and flimsy budget case. I'd actually feel perfectly fine putting high-end components in here. Montec did a great job of delivering this one and keep it under budget, which we love to see. These ARGB fans, which I have set to red, pair perfectly with our Formula Mod red, gray, and black cable extensions. I haven't used this kit for a while, but I absolutely absolutely love them. And finally, to wrap up this parts list, we come to the graphics card, and I told you already that this is a signature ZTT budget build. You know we're going with an RX 5700 XT, which I sniped used off eBay for 140, and the best part is that this is the power color red devil model, which pairs perfectly with the entire build. If you're new around here, the reason why this is signature is because the 5700 XT competes directly with Nvidia's RTX 3060, and in a lot of titles, it actually wins. I'll show you that in the benchmarking section, so don't go anywhere. Before that, though, here's what the final parts list is looking like, and I said earlier, if you have to buy a one terabyte NVMe at full price, which you probably do, then this is gonna be just over the $500 target price. But with a little bit of patience and some deal sniping, it wouldn't be terribly difficult to get it under $500 like I did. So now the PC is back in my house, and here's a little bit of a preview for an upcoming setup guide video. We're actually gonna be using today's build for a future $750 full setup guide video, so I'm testing out the peripherals now for my full review. I'm not gonna reveal 
everything in here, but just know that some of these are bangers and I can't wait to share that video with you. For the PC's performance, I first fired up X Defiant and I have some bad news, which I think a lot of you saw coming. This very well could be my last video benchmarking this game because every time I fire it up, it takes longer and longer just to find a game. For this one, we're talking five solid minutes just to hop into a team deathmatch. I've had so much fun playing and benchmarking this game, but clearly the population is dying and one of the major issues with the game is the net code. This means that the information I see on my screen doesn't equate to what actually happens on the server. Ubisoft tried to patch this up recently, but it's resulted in trade killing, which everyone keeps complaining about now, and this actually happened three separate times during this one benchmarking game. On my screen, it looks like I clearly put enough bullets into the enemy to die and win the fight, but then the game tells me that we both killed each other at the exact same time, and it happens so often now, it's very dumb. The $500 PC did run the game smoothly though, around 100 to 130 FPS, and the temperatures for both the CPU and GPU stayed at or under 70 degrees, which you love to see. That's with 1080p and high settings with VSync turned off. I did polish off my X Defiant career with a dub, gave it a final salute just in case if this is the actual end, but if a major update comes out that fixes the game, I'll definitely be back to try it. For now though, it's gonna have to sit on the shelf. So because X Defiant is possibly dead to me, I figured it was time to start learning a new shooter, and I've been hearing a ton of good things lately about the finals. I put the settings for this one at 1080p medium, but I did turn on FSR 2.0. If you don't want any AI upscaling, you could use TAAU, which Sam did in the upcoming full benchmarking charts. The only game mode I could play on my rookie account was Quick Cash, and I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't really vibing with this one. The 20 second respawn timer in teams of three just doesn't do it for me, but I do like the gunplay, graphics, and art design of the game. The PC was running it pretty smoothly too, around 75 to 85 FPS, but honestly, it felt even smoother than that because there was some consistent frame timing here, and the CPU stayed under 70 again, and the GPU was under 75 pretty much the entire time. After my first game, I did unlock the quick game modes, which are a bit more of my style, and I fired up my first ever power shift mode, and this completely changed my outlook of this title. This was now a 5v5 King of the Hill style of game where you're fighting for control over a moving platform. I had this one kill where I placed a platform on the ground perfectly in the right spot to launch me into the control platform so then I could take out the enemy and secure the zone. There's just so much destruction and chaos going on, but it feels manageable and super satisfying when you get the kills. Other than the main quick cash game mode, I'm definitely now vibing with this game, so there's a chance this takes over the benchmarking section as my FPS game of choice. And finally, here's Witchfire, which also has a chance of becoming a new staple for these benchmarking runs, but you've probably never heard of this one. This game has been on the Epic Store for like a year now, but only recently got transferred over to Steam for early access. For this, I put the settings at 1080p with no upscaling, high preset, and turn motion blur off. Witchfire is sort of a first-person shooter roguelike where you keep jumping into the action, try to extract with your resources sources like Witchfire and then make it back to your home base. At your base, you can then brew more potions, use that Witchfire to level up your attributes, and research new weapons that way you're stronger for your next run. I personally love this style of gameplay because it's dad friendly with a pause button and you can actually make progress in short 20 minute gameplay sessions if that's all the time you have. I was getting around the 80 to 90 FPS mark which felt great for the most part, but there was some stuttering every now and then, but I'll blame that on the early access, not the PC. This definitely feels like a game I could sink my teeth into and it was a blast last running it on even this super budget $500 gaming PC. So yeah, after I tested it myself, I give the PC back over to Sam so we could do a full benchmarking run and here are the results that he got. As you can see, pretty much every game is up there around the 1080p high to very high settings. Not many people think that this is possible with a $500 budget, but it's very possible and not even difficult if you know what you're doing. The number one tip I can give you is to target the correct CPU and GPU combo and then build from there. For the $500 price range, if you're willing to buy used components, then the $5,500 or even 3600 pair perfectly with the RX 5700 XT. And if you need some more PC building help, then don't forget about zttbuildhelp.com. This is all totally free, and I have a bunch of resources here that I actually use to pick the parts for my own builds. I also have templates with per part explanations and links to pure performance PCs and even creator PCs. Again, that's at zttbuildhelp.com, and it's 100% free to use. But yeah, be sure to let me know what you thought of this one down in the comment section, and if you wanna see a different way of building around this same price range, then feel free to click the video that's on the screen now.